All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we're going over one of the best, yet very hidden features Synology has built in right into DSM, and that is setting up the NAS as a reverse proxy. And I'll be honest with you, this is one of the best interfaces for a reverse proxy out there. I set them up on Linux servers all the time, and nothing comes close to being as easy as it is on a Synology to setting them up as a reverse proxy. And this unlocks an absolute ton of functionality built into Synology DSM that allows you to do so many things. It can allow you to run multiple instances of DSM all on the exact same public IP address. It can allow you to only expose very specific applications to the internet on Synology NAS. It can allow you to easily have an SSL certificate for things. It can allow you so many different things and it is all built right into DSM and actually really easy to use. This goes in conjunction with another tutorial I made recently on actually getting properly signed SSL certificates on a Synology NAS. And so this can be really useful if you've got a web server that you don't want to manage with certificates and have to handle that via command line, and you've got a NAS, what you can do is basically just use the NAS as a reverse proxy in front of the web server and have it handle the certificate, as well as only allow traffic coming into it that is destined for that. And so it does also really help with security because now people don't just need to know the IP address that you're going to, and so they can't just scan and say, oh, hey, that's running port 80, I found a website. Instead, they actually have to know the host name to get through the reverse proxy, and so you kind of get to isolate off your web servers directly from the internet, which can be very useful as well. And they also have a really good access to control list. So it's one of those things that has a ton of useful features for people who need them that is very tucked away in a hidden part of DSM. All right, so before we get started, what is a reverse proxy? And reverse proxies are pretty simple. Essentially what a reverse proxy is, is anytime you're running a web server, so HTTP, HTTPS, it basically allows you to run multiple websites or options on the exact same port and IP address, but match based off of the host name that comes in. So what does that mean? So let's say Google wants to use a reverse proxy and only has one public IP address. They want both Google Drive and Google Search to be run on the exact same public IP address and port, but they're actually being run on two different web servers one that does Google Drive, and one that does Google Search. So reverse proxy is simple. What you do is you basically have the reverse proxy say, hey, any traffic going to search.google.com, I'm going to forward that to the search web server. And any traffic coming to drive.google.com, I'm going to forward to the server that handles Google Drive. And that is how reverse proxy works. It looks at what's called the host name. So basically that URL section and it figures out, okay, I was supposed to send this to this server. And there's so many other things you can do with it, but that is really the core functionality of it. It has that added security benefit of now, neither search.google.com nor drive.google.com, those actual servers are not directly exposed to the internet. Instead, they are only exposed via proxy. So that really cuts down on the threat surface overall. And especially if you've got an old website, you can kind of have this proxy on there and it can help a lot with security because now nobody connects directly to it. All right, so that is my basic explanation as to what a reverse proxy is. I think the most useful part about this for the next part is actually showing you how to set one up and more accurately, how to find it within DSM because it's not easy. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go into control panel. Then it is under login portal, advanced, and here is our reverse proxy. Built directly into DSM, not a third party app or anything, but it is a fully featured reverse proxy. To add stuff to it, you just go to reverse proxy and we just go ahead and create new rules. And so everything I mentioned earlier is controlled by this one general screen the reverse proxy name, it's just a note, whatever you want to call it. And then after that, you say your source and destination. So source has three different components, 
protocol, which is either one of the web options, HTTP or HTTPS. Host name, that is that thing I talked about earlier. In this case, it would be search.google.com and drive.google.com. We're gonna be using a demo LAN that I've got with SpaceRex, so we're gonna be using that. And then there is port. Port in general will be 80 for HTTP and 443 for HTTPS. Those are the default ports, but whatever you're doing, you can customize it to whatever you really need it to be. And so you do have those other options there as well. Then we have the destination. So the source is basically where is this traffic coming from and what does it say it's going to? Then the destination is where should we send it? The host name is the IP address or host name of the actual server that you're proxying. So if Google was running search.google.com on 10.50.0.1, that could be what they go to. This would be the IP address of the web server that you are proxying. And it, this can be a local network connection because it's firewalled off. If you're running something on the NAS, like a Docker container, you would do localhost. And then whatever port you were using. That's pretty much it. They're fairly simple, but they're very powerful because of it. I am going to mention here very quickly, but not talk about it much past that, we also have two options here for custom header and advanced settings. In general, you don't really need to mess with either one of these settings unless something's not working right. Sometimes you do have to use a custom header for different applications, depending on how they are planning on coming the proxy in. So you may have to customize those, but in general, most standard web apps will work without either one of them. Okay, so before we go through the rest of the reverse proxy stuff, there's also all of these built in for specific applications on the NAS as well. And that's actually how we got to the login portal section right here. If we go into the applications tab right here, we also have built in reverse proxies for all of the different applications that support their own web interface. And this is something I use all the time, especially for Synology Drive. So this actually works the exact same way as the rest of the reverse proxies do but we can go down into this section right here that I use by far the most, and that is the domain section. This is how you make Synology Drive behind a reverse proxy on here. So what you can do is you can basically say drive dot, in this case, it's d dot spacerex dot co. So this is whatever domain you wanna run it on. And then this is now a reverse proxy, so anything that's going to drive.d.spacerex.co will be sent to Synology Drive. I use this all the time because this allows you to open up Synology Drive to the internet to get really fast sharing speeds, also running off your own branded domain, while also acting as a pretty good security measure compared to running it just on like port 5001. That's because the way this works is somebody has to know this URL, this domain name to get to Synology Drive. And so even though they'll see you running something on 80 and 443, those web ports, they won't know about this Synology Drive unless they also go to it. So it's a very useful way of kind of shielding out your stuff so people don't even know that it really exists. Plus 80 and 443, or web servers. So it doesn't really tell you that there's a NAS and anybody scanning for those ports is going to find millions of them that don't really do anything. So it's actually a way of security through obscurity. It is not obviously a perfect system for really, really, really sensitive information, but for just cutting out spam, it is very useful and is one of the reasons why reverse proxies are used so widely. So here, we're going to use this domain. And basically, it is like I set up a reverse proxy going to Synology Drive on ports 80 and 443. And so we'll show that here. And I should also mention that all of these have this access control profile where you can actually have specific rules based off of a source IP address that you can customize really well. As I said, this is ultra fully featured 
So you can run all this stuff on different IP addresses and allow different IP addresses to access it. It is very, very, very in-depth there. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and we've said we're running drive.d.spacerex.co as a reverse proxy on here, right? And now you've got two different ways that you can run this. So if you wanted to run this publicly, so say you wanted anybody in the world to be able to type drive.d.spacerex.co and show up at your Synology drive, then what you would do is you would port forward 80 and 443 from your router to the NAS, and you would create a record drive.d.spacerex.co to point to your public IP address. I cover this very in depth in my certificates video, so I'm not gonna go super in depth with how you can do it and different options for it. We'll just leave that linked down in the description below. So that's how you would do it publicly, but we're gonna talk about how to do it privately here. This means we don't want this opened up to the internet. Instead, we just want to be able to have everything nice and pretty and organized based off of domain names rather than just remembering ports. So that's why I've chosen that d.spacerex.co rather than just spacerex.co. So what I've done is I have set up a DNS server on here and we can go through and customize these records and see exactly how it works. So what we want to do is we wanna open up our DNS server and essentially we want to say that anybody going to drive.d.spacerex.co point them to the IP address of this NAS. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a record there. And then we can come in right here. And just like that, you can see it brought us directly to Synology Drive. So that is how this works. Basically, my NAS sees that we're coming in and we're trying to get to a host name called drive.d.spacerex.co. And so it then moved that to the Synology Drive application. And so that is how you can do it with internal applications. You can also do this with other applications as well, Docker containers, and even other NASes and web servers. So let's go ahead and now we'll actually go ahead and proxy something else. Let's say we want to proxy a Docker container that we're running on our NAS. So let's say I've got this Docker container right here. Currently this is speed test and it just opens speed test. And if you look, it is run on port 3000 for HTTP, 3001 for HTTPS. So normally what we would do to go to it is this. We would type in the IP address and then the port. By the way, this is called open speed test. It's very useful to use and it does kind of stop working really well once you go after like five gigabit of second throughput just because web servers kind of slow down at that time. But it's a really easy way of getting a quick and easy speed test locally on your network. So if you're trying to figure out, hey, what's my Wi-Fi speed and stuff like that, you can use this. But let's say we don't want it run it on port 3000 and we want to use our own custom URL. We want to run it just by typing in speedtest.d.spacerex.co. Well, we know that HTTP is 3000 and HTTPS is 3001. So we'll come back into our reverse proxy settings here and we'll create that. So we're going to say that speed.d.spacerex co port 80 so anybody coming in on speed.d.spacerex.co on port 80 is going to be sent to localhost localhost means whatever this nasa ip address is that's because it's running as a docker container port 3000 and we're going to go ahead and create two rules so we can have http and https so i'm going to go ahead and create create call it speed HTTPS. So generally you have to create two rules if you wanna run it on both 80 and 443, HTTP and HTTPS. And note, we could also just customize whatever ports we wanna do here if you had a reason to. HSTS is a way of automatically using a rewrite to force it to use HTTPS. Unless you're getting your own custom signed SSL certificates, do not use this because it will also tell your browser, if this is not using HTTPS, don't trust it. 
And then for our destination, we actually have two options here. We can actually just use HTTP because we don't need to worry about the certificate, the HTTPS side of things on the Docker container. Instead, we can still use the same 3000 and HTTP because the client will still get HTTPS, if that makes sense. So this is another really useful thing about having a reverse proxy is it will actually allow you to handle all of your certificates in one centralized location on this NAS if you are doing it publicly. So now that we've done that, the next thing we need to do is just make sure that speed.d.spacerex.co once again points to our IP address of our NAS again. So now when we go to speed.d.spacerex.co, we should be brought straight into open speed test. Just like that, we did not have to type a custom port because we are using that reverse proxy. And if we use HTTPS, we'll get a, a not secure warning, but it'll still go to that. And that is how you can use a reverse proxy. This whole time, we've been using localhost for the destination host name, but we can also use any other IP addresses. So all of these have just been internal things running on the NAS, but there's nothing to stop us from sending it to anything else on our local network. So, I mean, this could be our router, this could be whatever we wanted to, all proxying off of this. Though note, you have to think about anything you do here, depending on your port forwarding rules, could expose something to the internet. So just make sure whenever you're doing these things, if you do have 80 and 443 forwarded from the internet to your NAS, any of these reverse proxy rules you add in, unless you add in an access control profile, will then make that device publicly accessible, assuming the person knows the host name. And so that is how the reverse proxy works. There are so many useful things you can do with it, and it's really powerful. What makes it more powerful though, is if you get a wildcard certificate for your domain, you can run all of your local projects and stuff off of one NAS with one wildcard certificate and have HTTPS everywhere. So as we said earlier, we got this, hey, this is not secure, this is not trusted. That's because I don't have a signed SSL certificate for speed.d.spacerex.co. But let's say I did. Then the next step after this is to actually go ahead and assign our certificate into what reverse proxy to use with it. And if you've not watched my tutorial on how to set up a signed SSL certificate on a NAS, go ahead and watch that if you're confused on how to get one of these. Or if you have a process where you've got, you buy a wildcard certificate and you want to install that, you can go through and install it all under security and certificates. So these are some SSL certificates that I've been playing around with and messing with. And we do have this signed SSL certificate for site.spacerex.co. But we can then choose what we'd like to set it to by coming in here. And if you look, everything we've added in with HTTPS has showed up over here. So you can see that Synology Drive, that's that application section we chose. We get to choose what certificate we want to use here. Same thing with speed. This is where you can match your certificates. Now there's two ways of doing this. One, you could either get a certificate for every single one of these. So site.spacerex.co, speed test, speed.d.spacerex.co, all of them. You could go through and get SSL certificates for each of them. Or you could also go through the process of getting a wildcard certificate. That is gonna be out of scope of this tutorial, but a wildcard certificate is good for multiple domains, whereas a standard certificate is good for only the single domain it's signed for. Okay, Whew. I think we're going to leave it at there. There is so much stuff that can be done with this, and there's a lot of different applications for reverse proxy, but that is the basics. And this truly is something I use all the time because it gives me the flexibility to be able to really limit access to Synology Drive if that is something that somebody wants to use as their own kind of Dropbox. They can only expose Synology Drive to the internet without exposing the rest of DSM. And you're also kind of hidden away in all the noise due to the fact that 
80 and 443 are very common ports to be open. And somebody has to know that you're running Synology Drive on the application. Plus, when you share files out with the clients, the URL looks beautiful because it's coming from a standard looking website rather than running on 5001, which just looks odd in the URL when you're sharing files with somebody. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. If you'd like to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. And if you have any other questions, put those down in the comments below. And have a good one. Bye.